frequencies and histograms. First thing we're going to be talking about in this section with frequencies and histograms is what's called stem and leaf plots. And what you do with stem and leaf plots is you arrange your data by dividing each data value into two parts. And so here's an example right here showing how it is the values divided into those two parts. So um, when you're working with a number, let's say 23, the blue two here is the digits other than the last digit of each value are called the stem. So the two here is what we call our stem with the stem and leaf plot. And then we have the red three there and that's representing your leaf. And sometimes you'll see in a stem and leaf plot you'll see a key that says two and then the line three which means 23 and the key tells you how to read the value so stem is representing um, the digits other than the last one the leaf is representing the very last digit of a number so let's look at an example of how to create a stem and leaf plot it says here with our example the temperature in degrees Celsius for two weeks are given below they want us to use the data to make a stem and leaf plot so we have 7, 32, 34, 31, 26, 27, 23, 19, 22, 29, 30, 36, 35, and 31. So our numbers here are ranging from 7 all the way up into the high 30s, and it looks like 36 here is going to be our highest value. So we're going to create a stem and leaf plot representing that. So to do that, we're going to make our stem side, which um, since our lowest number here is seven, I can, and our highest number here is 36. Notice my stem side is representing my tens digits, where my leave side is representing my one digits. So the lowest number is 7, so on my stem side there's no 10, so that'd be 0. And then we do have um, values in the teens, so starting with like 10 to 19, so the 1s. We have numbers in the 20s range and the 30s range. So notice the stem side we have 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the leave side is representing the 1s digits itself. So lowest is 7. Then we go to the next highest number is 19. So the 1 would be on the stem side, the left side. The 9 would be on the leaf side, the right side. And when you're putting the values on the leaf side, you need to put them in order from least to greatest. So notice that my next number is 22. So we have our 2 here. And then the greatest number in the 20s is 29. So Notice in the 20s, they went 22, 23, 26, 27, 29. Um, so they put it in numerical order there. Um, notice here in the 30s, there are two ones, and that is because there are two values of 31. Here's a 31, and here's our other 31. So since there are two of the same number, you do have to put that one twice because it does appear in the data set twice. So this is what a stem and leaf plot looks like. This specific stem and leaf plot too, notice that they labeled it. It's important to label. So this is temperatures in degrees Celsius. And so make sure you do that when you're creating stem and leaf plots. The next type of um, frequency we're gonna look at here is frequency tables. And they show the frequency of each data value. And if data is divided into intervals, the table shows the frequency of each interval. So here we have our second example. It says the number of days of Maria's last 15 vacations are listed below. Use the data to make a frequency table with intervals. So here we have our set of values and I'm gonna walk you through some steps of how we create our frequency table. So our first step is we need to identify the least and the greatest values. So our least values are four, and then the greatest value is going to be 15 with our set of numbers right here. 
Once we've recognized these least and greatest values with the data, we then are going to divide the data into equal intervals. So we have to look at what our lowest numbers are, what our highest numbers are, the numbers in between, and how we can equally divide those intervals up. Excuse me, for this particular data set, we're going to um, do intervals of three. So we'll go four, five, six as one interval. Seven, eight, nine is another. 10, 11, 12. And then 13, 14, 15. So that's how the intervals are going to go. And I'll show you here in a minute. Our third step is once we um, decide on our intervals, we're going to list the intervals in the first column of the table, and then we're going to count the actual number of data values in that particular interval. And then we're going to list the count in the last column. So here's a table showing this. So here it says number of vacations. Here are my intervals in ranges of three. So we have four, five, six, interval four to six, interval seven, eight, nine, so seven to nine, interval 10, 11, 12, 10 to 12, interval 13, 14, 15. So what we have to look at is how many numbers are in the interval range of four to six? Well, we have four, um, here's five and six. So all those numbers between four, five, and six would go in that interval. And when we count that, it's going to be a total number of five. So that's how they get the frequency five right there. The next interval, we have seven to nine. So we have to count how many values in this data set range from seven to nine. So that's gonna be any number that is seven, eight, or nine. And there they are, those four numbers. So my frequency for seven to nine is four. 10 to 12. So that'd be a 10, 11, or 12. Here's 10 and 12. Here's another 12. There's no 11s here, so we have four numbers ranging from 10 to 12. And the last one here, the range is 13 to 15. So we have 14, 15, no 13s, so there's just two. So this is what a frequency table looks like. You do need to label it. The interval does need to be labeled on the left side with the ranges and the frequency, how often that number occurs in the interval. Frequency is on the right. Next you'll see um, histograms. And a histogram is a bar graph that's used to display frequency of data divided into equal groups. So um, the last example, working with frequency tables, you're going to use frequency tables to help you create histograms. So um, what the bars are representing with histograms, they need to be equal, um, they're not touching, and the bars themselves are showing the intervals. So what they want us to do for this example is they want us to create a histogram for the number of days of Maria's last 15 vacations. So here's the same data that we used in the previous example. So what we need to do is use the scale of intervals from the frequency table to help us create that histogram. So here's our frequency table. And then our second step is we're gonna draw a bar for the number of scores of each interval. And um, let me go on here. All the bars should be the same width and the bars should not touch. Um, the bars should touch, I'm sorry, but they do not overlap. And then when you're done creating your um, histogram, make sure you have a title and you're labeling the horizontal and vertical axes. So here is my histogram. Notice I labeled my vertical and horizontal axis. So my horizontal is length. My vertical axis is number. So my length is my, my length is my interval. My number is the actual frequency. So my first interval is four to six, so we label that four to six, and that's a frequency of five. So I create a bar graph with frequency up to five. Then we have our next interval, which is seven to nine. The frequency of that is four. Notice the width of these bars are all the same, and they are touching. They're not separated like a bar graph. 
Next interval, 10 to 12. Here's our interval, 10 to 12. Frequency there is 4. And then my last interval is 13 to 15, and that's a frequency of 2. So this is a histogram representing intervals and the frequency of those numbers that appear in the intervals. Last type of situation you'll see in this section is what's called cumulative frequency. And here again, you'll use a frequency table to um, help you with cumulative frequency. So with cumulative frequency, it shows the frequency of all data values less than or equal to a given value. And what you're doing in a frequency table is you're recording data that can help you keep track of values as you count it. So here is an example. Let's go through an example so this makes sense. It says the number of vowels in each sentence of a short essay are listed below. So here are the numbers. And then what they want us to do is they want us to make a cumulative frequency table. So the first step is we need to choose the intervals for the first column of the table. And so what we do is here again we create our frequency table. We look at our range of numbers. So we have our lowest value. It looks like it's going to be 28 here. Let me just double check. Yep, and then we look at our highest value. And it looks like our highest value is going to be 43. And what we have to do is record the frequency values of these intervals. So we have to think of a range from our lowest to highest and how we're going to set them up. And then what you do is you're going to add the frequency of each interval to the frequencies of all the intervals before it. And then you're going to put that in the third column of the table. So this might be a little confusing, but let me um, show you what this looks like. So we have our frequency table. We have our range of numbers, our intervals. So our number is our intervals. So here our intervals are 28 to 31, which is rain with rain, uh, intervals of 4. 32 to 35, 36 to 39, and 40 to 43. So those are the intervals. Then what we need to do is um, we count the frequency. So how many numbers range from 28 to 31? There are going to be two. So we have here 28, anything 28, 29, 30, 31. I don't see 20, let's see, 29. Here's a 29. 30, there's no 30s. And now let's see if there's any 31s. No 31s. So that's a frequency of 2. So then we now look at the frequency of 32 to 35. There will be 7 numbers in that range. There are going to be 5 numbers in the range of 36 to 39. And 3 numbers in the range of 40 to 43. So these first two columns are familiar from the last examples. But what's new here is this cumulative frequency. And what you do here is you keep adding on. So the frequency of 28 to 31 is 2, so we start with 2. Then what you do is you add the next frequency of the next interval. So now we add 2 plus 7 to get our 9. Then we keep counting on. So now we add 9 plus 5 to get our 14 and 14 plus 3 to add to get our 17. So our cumulative frequency is we just keep adding the frequencies starting with the original. And then that's what it is. So we'll go over any questions you have in class and make sure you wrote all this information down.